in the Old Testament. Like I said, we're only a few, actually, what, five, uh, six, seven weeks away from Easter. And we talk about the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ and uh, the declaration of who he is. And so I want to take this opportunity in the next couple of weeks of, of taking and looking and moving towards Easter and seeing Christ in the Old Testament. We have the scripture says, Then Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, and he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I am? The question is, who is Jesus? Right? Some say you're John the Baptist, uh, Elijah, other Jeremiah, one of the prophets. But who do you say that I am? And, and Peter answers this, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Who is Jesus to you? And it's an important question because Jesus is who he says he is, right? Uh, my theme, and this is my personal verse for, the, for this, this year, is so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Of being in God's word. And what does the Bible say Jesus is? Because he was more than just a teacher. Right? He's more than just a religious leader. But Jesus is God. As we explore God's word, as it reveals Jesus to us. We talk about the idea of, of the word. And throughout the Old Testament, we have this reverence for the word of God. Actually, so much so that when the scribes would copy it, and they would write through the, the verses, and they came to the word of God, they would actually stop, wash their hands, get a new pen, write God's word, put th that pen down, wash, and continue on. A reverence for, for the Word of God. We see this all throughout the Scriptures. The psalmist says, Forever, O Lord, your Word is settled in heaven. The Word came to represent God. It revealed God. And there was a reverence for it. Actually, Psalm 139 is the longest chapter in the Bible. And guess what the main theme of it is? God's Word. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, and a light unto my path. I will hide God's word in my heart, that I might not sin against thee. And so the love of God's word is because it reveals God to us. And John, in writing his Gospels, picks up on this theme. He says, in the beginning was the, what? The word. And the word was with God, and the word was God. That the Word and God were one in the same. He continues on, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. That we beheld the, His glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. That the Word came into this world. And of course that Word is Jesus. You know, we celebrate Christmas, the, the birthday of Jesus. But Jesus existed prior to his birth as a second person of the Trinity, second person of the Godhood. It's Jesus, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, three in one. We worship one God in three persons. And so before Jesus came into this world, born as a man. He existed eternally in times past as God. Now think about that. Now just a few weeks, we're going to talk about Christ's death on the cross. That God, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, did this for you before creation. Before you were born. He knew he was going to come and die for you. Philip says to them, says, Jesus talks to them, says, Jesus, Philip answered and said, Lord, show us the Father, and it would be sufficient for us. Right? Show us God. I think this back, Moses, at one point, said, show us, God, I want to see you. And you remember, he went up on Mount Sinai, and God put him in a crevice of the, of the rocks and passed by. We have that desire, Lord, let me see you. Reveal yourself to me. I don't know if you ever felt that way. The Bible reading I'm doing uh, is slightly different from the one I have out back uh, because I read uh, a poetry 
as well as everything else. So right now I'm in the book of Job. And in Job's suffering, as he's going through all these things, he's crying out, Lord, I want to see you. And I think sometimes in our lives we feel like, God, you're so far away, right? Have you ever prayed and the Lord uh, reveal yourself to me and you feel like your, your prayers kind of hit the ceiling? But God is ever near. And how do we know what the Father is like? Through His Son, Jesus Christ. Jesus says, look, have, I've been with you so long and yet you have not known me, Philip. He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? Jesus Christ is the Word. Jesus is the Logos. That's the Greek word for, for the Word, right? He is the revelation of, of God. If you want to know about God, look at Jesus. He reveals himself to us. The passage I'm going to end up on on Easter is out of Luke, and this is after the resurrection. And on the road to Emmaus, Jesus appears to some of his disciples as they're walking down the road. And they don't know who he is. God has cloaked himself, if you will. And as they're walking through, they're like, haven't you heard all the events, all the buzz? And this is Jesus speaking. He says, at beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them in all the scriptures a thing concerning himself. That this is the Word and is the revelation of God. But it's, this book is more than just words on a page. It is a revelation of Jesus Christ. And in here, Jesus takes him through the Old Testament, through Moses and the writings of the prophets. All these things point to Jesus and show him who he is. Jesus says, if you believe Moses, you would believe me, for he wrote about me. These are Jesus' words. This is to the religious leaders who are like, wait a minute, who are you? And all of a sudden you come on the scene, right? You're preaching with this authority. You're not kind of following our rules. Who do you think you are? And Jesus says, haven't you been reading? All that you've read speaks of me. So this morning actually is, is going to be much more of an introduction in the study we're going to have. To encourage you, really kind of whet your appetite, as we go through the scriptures, say, Jesus, reveal yourself to me. Well, wait a minute, this is a story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Right? This is the story of creation. This is the story of the fall. And yet Jesus is woven all throughout the scriptures. If you look for them. Exactly. And then he said to them, These are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in Moses and the law, and the prophets and the Psalms concerning me. And he opened their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures. And my goal is through the study is like, God, reveal yourself to us. Think of the old chorus. Open my eyes, Lord, I want to see Jesus. Right? Jesus is the most precious. And we see this revealed in all aspects of his word. And so we're going to break this down into countless different ways of how God reveals Himself to us. Like I said, this is uh, uh, so it'll be an introduction. Well, it always feels clumsy, right? But then you lay down the groundwork. The first time we, we see how Jesus is revealed to us is through prophecies. And you guys know what prophecies are. They're foretelling, right? Things in, that were spoken in the Old Testament that Jesus fulfilled in the New Testament. There are over 400 verses in the Old Testament. Right? I've read estimates up to 530 Old Testament verses that talk about the Messiah. And who's the Messiah? It's Jesus. 
And actually, Jesus fulfilled at least 300 different prophecies in his earthly ministries. And it'll be exciting to see how he fulfills each and every single one of these. Just a, a little taste. I don't know if you can read that where you're at. I might have to use your binoculars. But we'll break into this. Actually, starting next week, we're going to look at some of these prophecies. But just as a foretaste, that Jesus would be born in Bethlehem. That's out of Micah. And guess what? Jesus was born where? In Bethlehem. Actually, if you, any math whizzes here? Actually, I, I found this chart. And on the side is the probability of this happening. Right? This is beyond me. I, you know, I, I lose count after 20 because I run out of fingers and toes. But it's fascinating of each one of these prophecies actually coming true in one person's life. And the chances are small often. And yet add all of these together. Jesus is who he said he was. He was the Messiah. Right? That talks about Christ entered into Jerusalem riding on a donkey. He was betrayed by his friends. He was betrayed not only with a kiss, but he was betrayed with 30 pieces of silver. That dollar amount was given in the Old Testament. Right? The crucifixion of how he was going to die was written thousands of years before he actually did. As you read the Gospels, you'll say time and time again, you'll say Jesus did this so that the Scriptures would be fulfilled. And we have all these things laid out throughout. Even the book of Genesis. At the fall, when God comes down and He clothes men, and He talks about that His... Messiah's heel would be bruised and yet the serpent's head would be crushed. A prophecy of Jesus Christ accomplished on the cross had victory over Satan and death. All these things are laid out all throughout the scriptures. As you read it and the pages come alive, each one of these ones will point to Christ. So we're going to spend some time looking at the prophecies. The second type of, of way Jesus is revealed in the Old Testament are by types. And a type is a, is a person or a thing in the Old Testament that foreshadows a person or something new in the New Testament. Right? These aren't just straight out lies, right? These are prophecies that where God said this is going to happen and it happened. Types are as we look at uh, lifetimes or events that in here allude to Jesus. For instance, Adam. We talk about Jesus is a type of the second Adam. Right? Just as we were all born in the flesh through the first Adam, we're told in the book of Romans that Christ is the second Adam. That he is our head. That's a type. That in here we talk about, I mean, there's, there's so many, these are just a few people who are likened that Jesus is a type of some of my favorite is we look at the idea of the Passover as we head into Easter, the Passover meal. And he talks about the lamb that was a firstborn. It was sinless, right? It was spotless. How that's a type of Christ and the sacrifices all point to Jesus. The tabernacle. Now each article within the tabernacle is a picture, a uh, type of Jesus. That in the wilderness, as they were rebellious, Against God, God sent serpents. And in here they got bit. And God told Moses to take and make a bronze serpent and put it up on a rod and hold it up. And anyone who looked up would be made whole. It's a picture, a type of Christ. That Jesus said, he'd be lifted up. And all then who look unto him will be healed. That Jesus is our salvation. And we have all these types that are lined out all throughout Scripture. And I hope that makes you excited as you read these things. Because the meaning behind them becomes so deep and more, much more meaningful to us as the events unfold. I think sometimes, especially as a New Testament church, we often like, why do I read the Old Testament? You know, it's got a bunch of long names. 
right? It's got a whole bunch of begats. I know some of you have been reading through the Bible, and you've written some of those long, and it's so-and-so begot so-and-so, and so-and-so begot so-and-so, and your eyes kind of glass over, and you're kind of like, why am I reading this? But I want to encourage you, because I, I believe that you cannot understand the New Testament without fo- the foundation of the Old Testament. That these things are written, and we see Jesus woven throughout the pages, throughout the accounts. That when Jesus arrives, you're like, oh, wow. We see him all throughout. And so we're going to spend a, at least one, if not two Sundays, looking at all these different types. The third thing we're going to look at it was called Christophanies, right? That's a real fancy word. Actually, you have Chris, uh, Theophanies and then Christophanies. Right, that'll be on the Jeopardy question for next week for 500, Alex. But as we look at these things, these are Jesus or God appearing in the Old Testament. Right? The, the, the word Theophany comes with the first word, theo, right, which means God, like theology, right, is the study of God. And the second half of this is the Greek word means to appear, so a theophany means God showed up. And then a Christophany would fall into the same thing, right, Christ appearing in the Old Testament. Then here, that Jesus appeared in times past. And you say, well, wait a minute, Pastor, that doesn't make sense. How did Jesus appear before he was born? And in here, the idea that Jesus took the form of a man in the Old Testament. Right? He appeared as. But that's different when Christ came at Christmas. That he came and actually didn't come in the form of man. He actually came as a man. Right? There's a difference of t- taking the form of something and actually becoming something. And so it was imperative for Christ to come, to be born of a virgin, in here, to be a sinless human being, to die for the sins of you and I on the cross. But we have the Old Testament, we have these appearances where God shows up. Now, I, I'm one, now, I, I don't know battle this out or not. But I believe that when Jesus, the, when God appears to everyone in the Old Testament, I believe every time that's Jesus. Right? And he, I, I, I think that Jesus is sort of that mediator between God and man. And these categories fall into in the three ways that, that God reveals himself or Christ appeals to us. The first appearance we have is, is sort of in a non-human form. You say, well, what's that? I think of Moses. When God appeared to Moses the first time. Does anyone remember how he appeared? As a burning bush. Right? The bush wasn't consumed. But take your f- shoes off your feet. You're on holy ground. And God spoke out of that. Right? Now, God is not a bush, right? But he appeared as that. So we see God appearing in those type of ways. Uh, the Shekinah glory, that as God led Israel through the wilderness. I don't know who my Bible scholars are this morning. Right? During the day, he appeared as a pillar of what? Cloud. And at night, it was a pillar of fire. And as God would come and meet Moses in the tabernacle of meetings, we see that come down. Right? God appearing, revealing himself, not in human flesh. The second one, God appears as a, as a man. Right? We see this played out. And the last one, we have this interesting thing in the Old Testament. It talks about the, the angel of the Lord now. It's important to have that the in there. Because there are angels of the Lord. But throughout the Old Testament, we have this appearance of this, of this character, the angel of the Lord, and I believe that's Jesus Christ. 
So here's a quick list of some of these things that are brought in for us. Um, the Lord appears to Adam. Right? He talks about in the evening, God came down and communed with Adam. He appears to Abraham. And several times, a couple times he appears uh, in a dream, a couple times he appears as a man. Uh, I think before Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed, that he appeared with two angels. You have Jacob wrestles with this man all night long. It was God. You talk about the burning bush of Balaam. We have Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego who are thrown into the fiery furnace. I remember when they were thrown in, it was so hot that the soldiers who threw them in died because of the heat exhaustion. And after they were in there for a little while, Nebuchadnezzar looks in, and you remember what he saw? He goes, didn't we see, wait, wait, we, we threw in how many? Three. Yet I see one more. And he's like the Son of God. And we see these times when, when Christ shows up. That God existed. That God cares. All these things are fulfilled in scriptures. So we can know the reality we have today. All through Jesus Christ. Amen? I mean, I, I, I know this is intro, and this is kind of like going through all, checking all the boxes. But this makes me excited, because it, I turn around and look, that all these things, right? Oftentimes I, I think of, like, in the Hall of Faith, where God did these mighty works. And it's like, man, I wish God would work like that in my life. You ever felt like that? Right? You know, it would be great if... if you just went out every morning and just picked up manna off the ground and you didn't have to go to the grocery store. Go to Hannaford. You didn't have to do all those things. Right? God just provided. Oh, wouldn't that be amazing? Folks, the same Jesus who did all these things in the Old Testament, this God is the same God who lives in you who provides for you, who cares for you. I, I kind of cringe because somehow the, the modern church have, has gotten this idea that like, there's an Old Testament God and a New Testament God. Um, there's a, a famous preacher, and uh, he said a couple years ago that we need to take modern Christianity and couple it from the Old Testament. That you don't need to read the Old Testament. It has nothing to do with you. There's a real fancy theological word for that. Hogwash. The Word is Jesus. He is forever the same. As you read these accounts, it's not a foreign God who's doing, who's leading who's departing the Red Sea, leading Israel through. That's not a strange God. That's the same God that we have today. The God who appeared to Moses in the burning bush, who says, I am the great I am. Jesus is the great I am. It's one of the same. We worship one God. Right? All these attributes. God does not change. And folks, it would behoove us. I love that word. I always sound fancy when I say it. You know, it, it behooves us. It's to our benefit to know the Old Testament, to build up our faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And I think sometimes the, the, the modern church has, has lost its, its power because we've lost our faith because we do not know the scriptures. And we see God who appears, who cares. It's the same God who appeared and cared. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. It's the same yesterday, today, 
and forever. The last way we're going to look at this are these illusions. That God is alluded to. Jesus is alluded to in the Old Testament. What I mean by that is that when God is said to have done something or has a characterization, that's easy for you to say, that in the New Testament attributes to Jesus. And this is a, a fascinating study as we read through God's Word and it talks about Jesus uh, was a creator, but it says that God created, therefore Jesus is God. And here's a list of just some of the things that the Old Testament said God did, God is, and the New Testament says Jesus did, and Jesus is. And we're going to break these down. That we're told that God created, right? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And yet, in Colossians, we have that Jesus Christ created all things. Well, wait a minute. How can that be true? How can, how can it be that God created all things, and yet we have that Jesus created all things? There's only one conclusion. What? That Jesus is God. And we see the Pharisees in the Gospels wrestle with this, right? Because Jesus tells a man, your sins are forgiven you. And the Pharisees are all like, whoa, 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 with Jesus. Only God can forgive sins. That's true. The Old Testament is clear. It's, Jesus, it's God who forgives sin. Come let his reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins may be scarlet, they should be white as snow. But Jesus, you're claiming to forgive sins. Yeah, he did. Well, wait a minute. If God can only forgive sins, and Jesus forgives sins, therefore Jesus must be God. And oftentimes we, we go down through and people will question as the Gospels, because Jesus didn't come out and actually say that he was God. He did something better. See, Jesus didn't want you to believe that he is who he says he is because he said it. What he says is, look at all these fulfilled prophecies that I have fulfilled. Therefore, you must conclude that I am God. He turns around and says, look, I forgive sins. We talk about having power over creation. And Jesus calms the sea. Right? And it's interesting because we read the Gospels and the response to all these people, who is this? Right? That even the winds and waves obey him. Who is he? He must be God. And Jesus says, before Abraham was, I am. There's a few times it's interesting Jesus uses that term, I am. And the response, I think of the soldiers who came to arrest Jesus. They said, we're looking for Jesus. And he said, I am. Now you read that in English, you're like, oh, it's a big deal. But the soldiers fell down over the power of that name. Why? Because remember we talk about Moses and the burning bush? Moses asked, what is your name? And God says his name was what? Tell him, I am has sent you. And Jesus claimed to be the I am. See, this is just, I, I, maybe I'm just geeky, right? I have been known to be kind of nerdy. But I think this is so exciting and so cool, the continuity in the Word of God. The Word of God reveals who Jesus is. Not starting in the Gospels. Not just because it's a red letter in your Bible or mine. No, because the Word of God says that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God. And each page we turn throughout the Scriptures tell us more about God. His revelations to us of who He is. And we get into John. 
And we talk about the Word. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Who is this? It's Jesus. The same Jesus who comes into our lives. The same Jesus in whom we worship. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. What a name. There's no name given among men by which we must be saved. It's Jesus that every knee will bow, every tongue will confess. It has not changed from the beginning of time and beyond that. It's Jesus. So I pray that as we head towards the cross and the resurrection of Jesus, I pray that God would just open our eyes and, and strengthen our faith as we explore the Old Testament and see Jesus revealing himself to us. I know that today is just sort of introduction. We're going to dig into each one of these deeper over the next couple of weeks. But I hope in here I've at least stirred a little excitement. And my prayer is, Lord, for the next few weeks, open our eyes, Lord. Reveal yourself to us. Show us something we haven't seen before. Make this word come alive. Help me see Jesus. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for your word. Lord, I pray within us, you, we are a people who are hungry for it. Lord, I, I pray as we turn these pages, Lord, that you will reveal yourself to us. And in this, Lord, increase our faith. Encourage us in our walk with you. And in here, Lord, help us to turn that to praise for who you are. Lord, I pray you encourage us in who you are, Lord. And that's this your name. Amen.